Hi everybody, welcome to Live Sound Tips. Today I'm working from home on a show file and I just felt the need that I need to put more emphasis on my bass drum. This is a setup for a new country band. They want that really produced uh, drum sample sound live. What a lot of studio engineers do is that they had drum sample over the real drum. Uh, when you have a good drum, you don't need to replace them. You just want to enhance your drum. So this is what I will try to achieve today. For my bass drum, I want to have more low end, that more uh, triggered, punchy feel. And I want that to be as even as possible for my mix. If my low end in my mix can be really even live, it's gonna feel big all the time. So this is what we're gonna do here, that big massive drum sound, and we're gonna do it with a oscillator. Today I'm gonna use a Behringer wing, but it could be done with pretty much every console. It's just a it's just a raw thing that will be different, but the idea is the same. Even if you are on an X32 or on even an old M7CL. Uh, I was doing that trick years, years ago. So I'm gonna take an oscillator from my uh, wing. In the wing, it's in the routing menu, oscillator, and I want to assign that oscillator to a channel. Uh, I know on the older console, I used to do that with a bus. More on that in a upcoming vlog, if you wanna see me do that trick on a kahong live with a band that i've worked with we had a kahong instead of a bass drum and to have that really big bass drum e feel i did exactly what i'm doing here so i'm gonna assign my oscillator to a channel my channel 24 in this case is not used so i'm gonna unlock my patch and assign my oscillator one what I really need is a low end frequency. Right now it's set to 45 Hertz. I'm gonna try with something closer to 50. Usually I try to set the frequency of the oscillator to fit with the real bass drum. The, the, the real bass drum as a note, it has a, it has a tuning. I wanna try to match that, but just in the lowest octave available. Level, I'm gonna set that to minus 18. Uh, set it to taste. If minus 18 is too loud, turn it down. If it's not enough, just make sure to bring it up until you don't clip. And be careful with this trick uh, not to clip your subwoofer, because sometimes you can send a lot of energy into your subs and some of them won't like that so just be careful use it but don't abuse it you can see here on my eq there's only 50 hertz if we listen to that it's only a 50 hertz tone it's not fun you absolutely don't want to have that in your own mix what we want to do here is to use the gate this is the key thing here and funny play on word here keep in mind the word key I want to set up a gate and I don't want an expander like we have here. I really want to have a gate that will cut down and I want that gate to shut everything. I just don't want anything to go through because if I set the range to be less than everything that I can, it's not gonna cut down. So I want to set the range to minus 60. Attack, I want it pretty much zero. Hold and release is how we gonna shape the tone of the oscillator. Remember what I said about key? We're gonna add a key source here to that gate. Key source will be my original bass drum. I'm just gonna play a loop from my playback here. I'm gonna have my kick going. You can hear that. What I wanna do is set the threshold so that my bass drum hit coming from channel one is used as the key to open that gate. And now if I raise my fader and push up on that channel 24, I'm having a lot of low end right now. And remember what I said about shaping the tone that we have with the old and the release? I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna exaggerate what I would do here. So if I, I want something to feel really big and more hip hop like, I can open up the release.
you know, it, it sounds like an electronic drum kit, basically. But if I want to have it more discreet, I can put it to a total of around 100 milliseconds. So hold, for, hold 50, release 50. Adjust that to your taste. If you want to have a really long bass drum, maybe put the hold maybe put the hole longer if it's something that you like or adjust the release to the length of the bass drum that you want to have but you really you can decide what you are doing here so i'm gonna try to go back to what i where i was around 100 milliseconds total on boat was fine 50 50 if you're watching this on your phone, you probably don't hear it, but if you have a headphone on or something that has low end, it feels massive. It has a lot of low end energy. We could even change the frequency and put that lower. If I go here in my oscillator and I drop the frequency to something like 40 hertz, my headphones are vibrating right now. It's so low and powerful and so even because the tone don't change volume like the real bass drum does. If you want to have a really steady low hand with massive punch, that's one way to go. I have also done that trick to replace bass drum live. When I was doing, you know, young player who are not really good at drum, high school shows or kids that don't have an even bass drum volume, uh, I was totally removing the, the original bass drum and I was just putting that slightly under everything. It was not, it was not a clicky bass drum, but it was giving me that even feel and it made the band sit better. When you have a really bad player, this could be an option to save your mix or you can just blend it maybe heavily and bring the bass drum down, the original bass drum down a little. Just find that sweet spot where you have your low end feeling good. You don't want that much dynamic in the low end of your mix when you are doing live sound. I hope this trick was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Until the next one, please take care of yourself and I'll see you guys later.